I received hundreds of submissions to redraw, but I could only pick five, so let's do it. Redrawing your art in my style. Our first redraw piece is going to be by Noah the Phoenix, which I can only assume is who this character is. When I saw this piece, I just thought the colors really came out to me. I'm obsessed personally with the combination of orange and blue. I think it's a very common color combination that happens in my artwork a lot. Of course, they are complementary colors, so they go really well together naturally, but this really popped out to me because the angel wings were so interesting. I don't think I really draw wings often, and when I do, it's on a very cartoony, stylistic, simple bird, and it's usually like a half circle with some lines on it, and that's usually my wing. So I thought it would be really fun to tackle this piece that have these really big, beautiful angel, or I guess they're not angel wings, I guess they're, they're phoenix wings. Either way, giant feathery wings on a person, so this was something that I definitely wanted to tackle. So obviously I started off by sketching this particular piece, and the first thing I really wanted to tackle was the pose of the character. The character is sitting on a box, as you can see, with their pal, this flying squid, but I felt like their pose was a little formal, like they weren't relaxed. I always try my best to imagine characters in their most natural state, so maybe if this person were sitting on a box, would they be sitting like they're at school, sitting up straight, not a hair out of place? Or are they going to be looking relaxed, hanging out with their little squid buddy? Are they going to be letting their weight kind of shift on their body? Are they going to let their posture not quite be the most upright and formal looking pose, I guess? To be honest, I don't actually know the personality of this character, so maybe they do sit really proper and nice when they do sit, and I just completely destroyed this character's personality. Either way, I thought it would be really fun to make it a more natural and playful pose, so I have them leaning on the box, one leg is stretched out, one is up, and they are reaching out to their little squid friend. But again, I don't know the personality of this character or their relationship together, but that little squid guy looks so happy and I could not resist drawing him. He's just a cute little guy and he goes along with those orange wings. I love him. Obviously, as you can see when it comes to the coloring of this particular image, I definitely had to tone things down and make them a lot more earthy. As you guys know, I'm obsessed with earthy tones, tones that aren't too bright. I really like them to be easy on the eyes, I suppose. I also went ahead and changed the location of the feather on this character's forehead. I wasn't really sure what it was doing there. Maybe it was growing out of his forehead, or maybe he likes to put it there. I really wasn't sure, but I thought it would be really cute to tuck the feather into his ear just so it had somewhere to anchor itself, I guess. So I put the feather in the ear, so I hope that was an acceptable place to put it. And I also really wasn't sure if this character was wearing cute little booties for shoes or if they were just wearing socks. So as someone that loves to just draw people in socks for some reason, I went ahead and put this character in socks. I mean, he is in the ultimate chill, relaxed position in his socks on a box that rhymed. <laughs> And the last detail that I added to this illustration to make it more of my style was instead of having a plain blue background across the whole image, I added a circle of blue behind it because that is something that I frequently do with my art illustrations, my art illustrations. I put just a little circle behind them to add a pop of color, but not to fill the whole page. I don't know, it's nice. It's kind of like a spotlight. I don't know. Either way, I had a lot of fun, especially tackling wings with this piece, so thank you so much to Noah the Phoenix for submitting. I hope I did your character justice. Next up is this really beautiful night scene with their character by Bird Puddle, which I love that screen name. Just a bird puddle. I really wanted to do this piece because, well, for one, I like to do a variety of subjects like humans and animals and creatures and such, but also the full background on this illustration is something that I don't normally do, and it's something that I normally do in a strange way, so I thought it would be really interesting to put into my style, which is what we're here to do. So obviously we have to start off by drawing this adorable cat character. And I think the focus of this illustration wasn't necessarily the cat character, but probably 
The background and just overall the environment of this illustration and the character being in it. But I like to focus on characters, so I drew the cat character much more large than they did originally. And like I do, instead of doing a full page background, I put them on a spotlight of grass and then put the background behind them as if it's a window into the environment that they are in. And then came the coloring of the illustration and it wouldn't be a Casey video without at least one regretful disaster that I've done. <laughs> when it came to the colors of this background, things were a lot more of a bright purple than I would like. If you're new to this channel, I don't like the color purple. I just, I just don't like it. But I do like more toned down purples or violets that have some black added to them. So I tried to go in a violet, dark way with the background, but then I ended up making my watercolor paints too thick, like I didn't add enough water. So then that kind of got mm, bad for the background. But you know what I like to say, it just adds texture. When you're working with traditional mediums, sometimes you just gotta roll with it. So we've got some lovely sky texture in the background. The colors are a little wonky for me. They are earthy, which I like, but I think that blue and that reddish purple just don't really go together. I think they're clashing, which is completely on me. But you know what? Let's get away from the background. Let's, let's just change our focus to that cute cat character. When it came to the posing of this character, I guess I should talk about that. I did add some asymmetry to it. Overall, I do like my poses or my drawings to be just a little bit asymmetrical and not exactly mirrored images. Overall, the pose is the same as the original illustration, but I did put one leg up so that they they have a difference. And honestly, that's that's really the only reason. Overall, I really enjoyed drawing this fluffy cat. I think she is super adorable, super fluffy looking, and I hope I did her justice. So thank you so much, Bird Puddle, for your submission. Our next redraw is a very interesting one. It's by Parzivai. I hope I said your name right. I really like this piece. It was very interesting in style. It's lineless, it's colorful, it's pastel. It's really interesting and almost abstract. We have this dragon with this creature or character holding onto it while it flies up into the air with little hearts and stars going around it. It was just so, so happy and magical and I thought this would be a very interesting one to tackle because it's so different to how I draw. However, I ended up going in a different direction with this piece, so it's not exactly how I draw normally, but I honestly just felt like using line art for this piece just wasn't going to do it justice, and I didn't, honestly, I wasn't even really sure how I would tackle this piece with a line art. I mean, I guess I would just draw it with line art, but I got really inspired by this piece. It was just so beautiful and colorful and flowy, and it made me really just want to try doing a lineless style with watercolor, which I know is the more normal way to work with watercolor. But with my particular way of drawing, I never felt like I could really get a good grasp on lineless watercoloring, which is why I always tried gouache. But I was inspired to try again with this piece, and I honestly had a lot of fun playing with a different style, even though it is still sort of my style. It is a lot different than how I normally draw. So this piece is kind of the oddball piece in the sense that even though I'm supposed to be drawing in my normal style, I ended up kind of doing something different that isn't my normal style. And because of that, there are actually quite a few mistakes because this isn't the way I normally work. I kept making mistakes. So the first being that I left out the eyeball of the dragon, which I did end up going through later with Posca pins when I added the little heart details. I tried to draw the eyeball in with Posca pins, but man, those things really just eat your paper up. I tried to be as gentle as possible and the Posca pin was just like, om nom nom nom. 
and destroyed my paper. So that was kind of sad and it also added a gross just like 3D texture that was different compared to the rest of the piece. But I think overall, because this was my first time really trying to work lineless with watercolor, I really did enjoy it and I think I can accept that one little mistake. In particular, I think the tail was my most favorite part, just adding that blue to pink gradient it was just so pretty and I loved it and it was just so flowy and it just turned out so great and just really embracing the imperfections of traditional art. Like I put down a pencil line for the dragon and you can see it and I don't care. And you can see the dragon where it crossed over itself. You can see through it because it's transparent and I don't care, I like it. And I hope you do too. So thank you so much for submitting this piece. Next up for our fourth piece we have, oh my gosh, I just realized. Looking at the picture scrolling, I was looking at the spots on the cat and it made me realize that I forgot to put the spots on the cat and now I'm sad. It's just a white cat, dang it. Well, if that ain't a classic Casey style move, forgetting something, I don't know what is. Anyways, we have this piece, Fat Cat by Miss Dingsda. I just loved the bright orange shirt on this cat. He just looks so goofy with his mouth wide open, just standing there. What is this big fat cat up to? And he's got horns? I love this little guy. Or I guess big guy. I like this big guy. So once again, starting off with the pose, just a straight shot of him standing there. My classic move when it comes to characters standing in place is that I always have them with their weight on one side. They're always leaning over with a leg sticking out. That is my classic default character pose. So that is the pose I went with. I also couldn't tell if this cat character was smiling or yelling or yawning. I thought it kind of looked like a yawn, so I have one of their hands up as if he's yawning into his hand. And again, just to add to that asymmetry to the pose so that he's not just standing there. Not that there's anything wrong with it, it's cute, but I like to have a little asymmetry, I suppose. The more symmetry there is, the easier it is to see the mistakes between each side, so asymmetry is pretty cool. I thought it was interesting how the original piece also used a circle behind the character, so that was a very similar aspect we had between our styles. Though lately I have been really into giving the edge of my circles a paintered, strokey look, so instead of having a solid circle, the edges kind of fade away, I guess, with brush strokes, so I really like playing with the texture on that. Overall, I absolutely love the colors of this piece. We have a lovely earthy brown orange color. That teal in the background is really nice too. And overall, the colors are just very earthy and maybe that's why I really like this piece. Who knows? Oh, and can we talk about the shoes on that cat? That cat has some pretty cool, fancy shoes. If you noticed while I was penciling this piece, I wasn't sure if I wanted to give this cat really big, long feet or small feet. With my style, I either give people huge feet or super small feet, and I wasn't sure, but I ended up going with small feet. And once again, I am super bummed that I forgot the spots on this cat, but what can you do? I will just have to add them in later. And there you go. I love the braces on this little guy. I love the horns, the buttons, the color, the shoes. He's a cute big cat. So thank you again to Miss Dingsda for submitting this kitty. And finally, for our fifth and final piece, we have an isometric groom by Unagi Draws. I just thought it would be really fun to compare my isometric grooms to someone else's isometric grooms. It's actually been a while since I've drawn an isometric groom. I think the last one I did was in a prompt a while ago. So when I saw this isometric groom in the hashtag Casey the Draw entries, I was super excited to draw this in my style. Though I did have a few concerns with drawing this in my style just because I felt like there's only so much changing to an isometric groom that you can do to make it your style. A cube is a cube, so that much 
you can only change so much to, but as I started to add little details in when penciling and especially when coloring, I really started to see my style come through to this piece. A couple of changes I made right away because I was drawing this on a rectangle piece of paper and isometric rooms are typically cubicle. I went ahead and had those bubbles coming out of that thing in the corner of the room. I went ahead and had the bubbles just escaping the room and just going all the way up to the top of the page because why the heck not? There were already little plants on the right side of this piece coming out of the room, so I thought, well, you know what? Why stop at plants? Let's add some bubbles. You know, just to fill in the space of the page. Something else I went ahead and added was just a few extra little details like a plant sitting on the dresser. When it comes to isometric rooms, I just love cramming as much little details and objects and things into the rooms as I can, but I didn't want to add too much to this piece because I didn't want to change the original piece. I made the pictures hanging on the back wall just curl up a little bit and hang from safety pins just to add a little bit something extra. And one of her boots at the end of her bed has fallen over because, I mean, I don't know her personality. Maybe she is a very neat and tidy witch, but I figured maybe she just kicked her boots off at the end of her bed and one of them has toppled over. I also made the window just a little bit larger to take up space on the wall, but regretfully I actually made the window a little too too big and it kind of took over the area that the waterfall thing was coming out of. But that's okay, I think it turned out fine. So when it came to coloring, this is definitely where my style of isometric rooms comes into play. So I did make the floor of this room wood because I really just love adding wood boards to rooms. I don't know why, I just love all the little details. I also made the wall stripes because I just, I love stripes and I also feel like when it comes to isometric rooms, one of the very simple easy ways to add, I guess a false sense of details is stripes because it just adds clutter and it makes the room look a lot more busy. So that's fun. Oh, and I also forgot to put pillows on the bed until I was inking it and I realized, so I put one little pillow at the end. Other than that, I think everything else is pretty spot on when it comes to copying the original piece. I just absolutely loved drawing this. Of course, the hardest part was adding the witch. Humans are hard, especially stylized little chibi humans. The pastel colors were really fun to translate into my style. They're still bright and colorful, but they also have a earthy undertone to them. But I do have to say, my favorite detail of all in this illustration are the bubbles. They were just so much fun to color. They just look so neat. And overall, I absolutely love this piece. This one's my favorite. I saved the best for last. So thank you so much to Unagi Draws. There is our fifth and final piece. I hope you like it. And there you go, five art pieces by you guys that I redrew in my art style. I hope I did you guys justice. Thank you so much to everyone who joined in. I'm sorry I couldn't do all hundreds of you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. And now a huge thank you to my wonderful patrons for all of their support. You guys are the best. If you want to be in the credits at the end of my videos, see secret sketches, coloring pages, early access, and more, check out my Patreon by clicking a link in the description. Thank you guys all so much for the support. Bye.